Grizzlies fans, today is the day. We went 235 days without seeing John Morant play basketball. And today he will do that. He is playing along with the Grizzlies against the New Orleans Pelicans at 7.30 p.m. Central Time. So our good friend over in New Orleans, Will Guillory, is here to break this one down. Are you as excited as we are? I'm very excited. It's been too long since we've seen John Morant play basketball. I enjoy seeing him play basketball. So it'll be fun. It, it, it might not be the matchup we were hoping to see. We'll get to that later. Uh, but yeah, it's always fun to see John Morant play basketball. This is like very highly anticipated. Everyone is talking about it because it is this guy who has been an all-star his entire career. Missed 25 games. This is the 26th game of the season. He is back. What do you expect? And now I'm just going to say this before I ask you the question, Will. He had media avail uh, late last week, and he said, I'm not going to force anything. Like, I'm not going out there. and I'm going to, like, force a 45-point game. He's going to go out and just hopefully make his team better. But coming from the other end, just from what you know about him and what you know about your team, what do you expect Ja to bring to the Grizzlies tonight? Yeah, I think, you know, one of the more interesting things he said during that press conference was him just feeling bad about just the way the season has gone for the Grizzlies and his absence and how it's kind of forced everybody to do more than they're used to. Right. And that's been a big part of the team struggles. And I think uh, I think uh, something that he's going to have to deal with early on is feeling like he has to doesn't have to make up for 25 games with this one possession. Right. Not feeling like he has to do too much and make 12 highlight plays to get them back. And I think, uh, you know, he just has to do what he does, kind of be patient, uh, find the opportunities when they're available and still obviously get Desmond Bain and Jaron Jackson involved. Uh, but I just want to see how much he's coming out and really press, pressing on that gas pedal and trying to make plays immediately and make his presence felt. Because uh, sometimes, because that could be good, obviously, because he's such a great player, but sometimes you could do too much, right, and, and f- try to force things. And I want to see how much he can try to find that balance tonight. If this was a home game, his first game back, you know that he scores his first bucket and the roof of the arena blows off. Now, New Orleans is very close to Memphis, so I'm going to assume Mm -hmm. there's going to be Memphis fans there. In terms of, like, New Orleans fans being fans of Jaw slash just, like, the game, do you think it's going to be crazy in the arena or, like, regular New Orleans Pelicans game? Oh, well, you know, that's, like, a little slight rivalry between the Grizzlies and the and the Pels so you know I'm expecting him to hear some boos tonight and you know there'll probably be a, a good contingency of Ja fans I know Ja and his dad have been around New Orleans a good little bit the past couple of years they're familiar with the city so I'm sure they'll have some people in the building but yeah I think the, the, the Pels fans are kind of feeling themselves right now the team's on a little winning streak they're healthy for a change. So I think they're going to try to come in and, and really prove a point against a Memphis team that we talked about in the past. It feels like every time the Pels go to Memphis, they end up losing about 30 when John Morant plays. So I think they got some get back. They're trying to get on them guys after years and years of getting destroyed out there at FedEx Forum. The Pelicans are healthy. One guy that is not healthy, he is questionable <laughs> for today with a non-COVID-related illness, is the big guy on the other team. That is Zion Williams saying, what is going on with him? If he is not available today for the Pelicans, how big of a hole does that leave in terms of you know scoring defense size for this team? It's big because, you know, the the strength of this Pelicans team is obviously their ability to score in the paint with Zion, Brandon Ingram, JV. Uh, So, yeah, Zion is the the, obviously the the leader in that the way he just able to get to the the rim every single time he wants to. So, yeah, they're going to have to switch things up. They're going to look different. Uh, As of late, they've been shooting a lot of threes. They just broke the franchise record for most threes in the game last time out against the San Antonio Spurs. So maybe we'll see some more of that with Zion now shooting a little bit more three pointers. But, yeah, I just think it's unfortunate. I mean, it's been five years Zion and Ja have been in the league and they've played six times against each other. It's really insane. Uh, So I'm really hoping they play because I just enjoy seeing those two guys and just knowing their story, how young they were when they first got to know each other and becoming the stars that they've become. Uh, But yeah, usually when you hear about these sicknesses the day of the game, it's usually not a good sign for guys playing. Uh, But I'm, I'm keeping my fingers crossed. I'm hoping we get to see these two dudes play because they're two of the brightest stars in the league. And it's just a great story to see them whenever they get to go against each other. 
Yeah, it's earlier this season. We opened up the season against the Pelicans, and it was that story again. Of course, Jaw was serving uh, game one of his suspension. The Grizzlies lost that one, 111 to 104. And although I always talk about Zion, you told me before we started recording, I always talk about CJ McCollum too, because <laughs> he is a Grizz killer. He averages more points every time he plays Grizzlies than he does like regular season stats. Uh, why? Yeah, I think, you know, he's a guy that uh, obviously during his time with the, the Blazers, the Grizzlies were a really good team. So I think he likes to wake up and play, you know, at, at the top of his game against some of the better teams in the West. Uh, but I think he's going to be an interesting, uh, you know, piece of the, tonight's puzzle just because I think he's starting to find his rhythm again. He was out for a while with a, you know, punctured lung. Uh, he was dealing with some serious stuff. His wife also had a kid, so he was out for a little while. So, yeah, I think he's really starting to find his rhythm again. He scored 29 against the Spurs the other night. And when he's playing well, when he's shooting the ball well, it opens up the floor for what we talked about earlier, those guys who like to get in the paint, Zion, JV, and Brandon Ingram. So when he's hitting shots, it really makes the game easier for everybody else. And he's a guy, just a, a vet who's been in the league so long that he understands that even when he's not involved, for a big chunk of the game, when it, things get tight, when it gets to the fourth quarter, he understands how to turn the switch on and really get himself going. Uh, so I think he's going to be a, a big part of tonight as well. Yeah, especially if Zion uh, is out, which we'll find out about mm -hmm. later on in the day. Uh, my last question, my second last question. That was a big lie. Uh, Desmond Bain had 31 points against the Pelicans in that first game. Jaron only had eight and five rebounds, so not his best game. But Jaron has been on an absolute tear the last six games. Um Des is averaging 25 points per game right now. Jaron in the last, I'd say, like he had two 40-point games and he's just been like on this roll. Who's who's the stoppers? Who Now that the Grizzlies have their big three, Ja, Jaron, and Des back in the lineup for the first time this season, who are the three guys who are defending those? I think the, the the number one guy for the Pels is always going to be Herb Jones. Uh, they're probably going to switch back and forth uh, him on Jar, him on Desmond Bain. Uh, I think that's going to be the big story. I think for Jaron, they'll probably throw uh, probably somebody like Brandon Ingram at him, try to uh, keep somebody who can move their feet because uh, you know we know Jaron likes to make plays off the dribble. Uh, but, you know, we talked about this before the first game. I feel like I talk about this every time we do one of these. The big story when you're defending the Grizzlies, you got to stop them in transition, especially when Jai's out there. They're so good at running the floor, getting those easy baskets, getting those transition threes for Desmond Bain. So you got to force them to, to walk the ball up, playing half court, uh, really force John Morant to really create everything. Uh, and that's when you can really – allow a guy like Herb Jones to be disruptive, get some steals, and a lot of Pels to get out in transition. Uh, but if you're running up and down with the Grizzlies, especially with John Moran out there, it's difficult because those guys are so athletic. Uh, they're so good at getting to the rim. So, yeah, that's the, the big story for the Pels tonight is keeping Ja and Bain out of transition, forcing them to hit tough shots. And I think that's when you see the Grizzlies struggle a little bit. All right. All right. Okay, now my very last question. This is how we're going to end it off. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Um, uh -oh. Mm -hmm. you're going to fill in the blank and I'm going to switch the blank up than what I usually do. Okay. You're going to have to put on your analyst hat and kind of do both Grizzlies and Pelicans here. If the Pelicans can limit the Grizzlies blank, they win. Offensive rebounding. I, I think that's a big thing for the Pels. Uh, you know, they've they've been a little bit better defensive rebounding. I think Zion has done a really good job getting rebounds more lately. Uh, but if you keep Jaron Jackson, Biombo off the offensive boards, I, I think you can do a good enough job defending those guys to win the game. All right. Easy peasy. Easy peasy. Well, thank you. Happy John Morant is back day. Happy <laughs> let's hope Zion is healthy day. Let's hope. Let's hope because we always like a good matchup. It's on TNT. It's going to be a fun one. And I appreciate you as always. So thank you for your time. I always appreciate you having me on. Happy holidays. Happy New Year. All the good stuff. Everything. And we'll see and you. Let's, let's hope we have a good game tonight. <laughs>